Good evening. Whoa, that's loud. <laughs> and the Lord be with you. And also with you. Everyone, welcome to everyone as we gather in the Lord's house for worship tonight. Uh, first of our three midweek Advent worship services, focusing on the symbols of salvation. We're going to be looking at this Advent season at some Old Testament accounts. Tonight, Moses and the burning bush, for example. Uh, and thinking about how those point us to to the Christ that is to come, or was to come, uh, the Christ who has come to rescue us and to make us his very own. A few announcements as we begin tonight. Um, just a reminder that poinsettias, I don't think that there's anything in your bulletin for the poinsettia orders, but those are due the 12th, is that right? Uh, they're, they're due by the 12th. There will be some in Sunday's bulletins if you haven't already placed your poinsettia orders. Uh, but the due date's a little early this year with everything going on in our world. Um, but please be sure to fill those out and, and have them in by the 12th. Um, Christmas decorating is this Sunday, right after church. So please uh, plan to stay. We thank the crew that came out yesterday. The tree is up. Might have to get fluffed a little bit and those kind of things. But uh, uh, decorations are out and ready to go on. The manger scene got set up outside, so it's, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas around here. Uh, and Sunday will make it look even more so. Reminder that we have new member Sunday coming up on December the 12th. Benjamin Beckstoffer is going to be baptized, and he and some other folks are going to be coming into our congregation uh, as new members that day. So please plan to be here. There will be a reception after church, uh, so we're looking forward to that. Anything else we need to share tonight? If not, then let's stand and sing our opening hymn. Oh, just a reminder before we get started, Roger is not here this evening. We're not entirely sure why, um, but we wanted to let you know he's not here, so we're going to be using Concordia Organist. Be patient. Sometimes the music takes a, a little longer to get started, um, but just be patient, and uh, Organist Harold is in charge. So please stand.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. In this season of penitence and reflection, let us think of our unworthiness and confess before God that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, asking for His merciful forgiveness. God Almighty, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son, our Emmanuel, to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. May the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared.
appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw what that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on, on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas. And established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not live by his soul or by his faults, and who does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. And be lifted up the whole nation's doors, that the king of glory may come. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. And look down off the nation's doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. A reading from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, feast of well-aged wine, of rich, full, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well-defined, well-refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. O Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Out of Zion. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He falls into the heavens above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who bear the covenant with me and sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Offer to God a sacrifice to 
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Lord, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it is abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish. And it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. <clears throat> article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of me. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. 
For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey Him. This is most certainly true. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our, His only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we begin our midweek Advent worship services, it's always good, I think, to, to think about that first article that we just read together. And what Luther had to say about what it really means. How God has blessed us abundantly. We've talked a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago now, about grumbling. Any of us ever grumble? I know I do. Um, especially as you're not finding the things you want in the stores right now. You, you go to the store and the shelf is empty. Uh, what has God done for me lately? It's good to read through that list and remember, you know what, maybe I can't find that, that special pretzel that I really always wanted on the shelf, but there's an awful lot of other things that God has really taken care of me with. And he continues to be with me and see me through. And that's what Luther reminds us of as we look at that first article. This week, what we're thinking about is really... Exodus chapter 3, where we find Moses and that burning bush. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near, take off your sandals, take the sandals off your feet, for the place on which you were standing is holy ground. Put yourself in, in Moses' place for just a minute. He's out tending the flocks. He's walking along, and suddenly he sees off to the side somewhere this bush that's on fire. Amazing enough that he's watching it burn, but realizes, you know what? Nothing is being burned up. What is going on? And he begins to, to go over to take a look. When suddenly he hears the voice, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. That had to be a not just startling moment for him when he hears this voice coming out of this burning bush, but it also had to be one that was filled with a certain amount of fear because anytime anyone ever comes into the presence of the Lord, there's always an amount of fear fear that is there. It seems from looking at the scriptures that when a sinful creature is standing in the presence of the Lord, the first thing that they are aware of is their sin. I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve to be here. I deserve to die because of my sin. So Moses is suddenly finding himself here. And at first, when you, when, when you hear what they said in the text, they talk about in verse 2, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. The angel of the Lord, that's a technical term that appears in the Old Testament. And anytime that you, you hear them speak of the angel of the Lord, you ought to be suspicious that this may well be God that they're talking about, not just some created angel. And that's not to minimize the angels in any way, but God is often referred to in his pre, or Jesus in his pre-incarnate uh, visitations as he's referred to as the angel of the Lord. And what do we find in this text? They intermingle times when they refer to the angel of the Lord, they refer to God, they refer to the great I Am. This is Moses finding himself in the presence of the great I Am. In a sense, if you want to parallel this to, to what happens in Luke chapter 2, you know the great story, the account of how Jesus came into the world. What about those shepherds out in the fields? And suddenly the skies light up. And the angels come to them, not the pre-incarnate Jesus, the created angels in this case. But suddenly there they are, and, and there's a message for them. They're to go and see Jesus. 
where they're going to find him. But here for Moses, God has a message. And the message is, I have heard the cries, the groans of my people Israel. Moses, you're going to go to Pharaoh, and you're going to tell him to set my people free. And then we start hearing the griping from Moses, don't we? <laughs> all, all the excuses that he can come up with as to why he ought not be doing that. But God has a rescue in mind. He has in mind that, that he is going to get his people out of Egypt. They have been groaning. They have been complaining. But notice how this works. It isn't Moses goes to God. God comes to Moses. Moses, you're going to do this because I am going to do it through you. God comes to us, too. Just like he did to Moses. Just like he did through the angels to those shepherds that very first Christmas. He comes to us. He invites us. That's what the gospel really is. It's invitational language. He invites us to receive from him the very gifts that he has for us. Gifts of salvation and life. Christ comes into our world. He takes on human flesh. He lives out the life that we can't live on our own in order that we will be saved. Because he does it for us. He doesn't expect us to be able to do it. He knows we can't. So God lowers himself. And he comes into our world. And he rescues us. He rescues us by taking on human flesh. And by laying that life down on the cross of Calvary. In order that he would sacrifice himself for us. And for our salvation. God comes to Moses, and God comes to us. And God comes to save. That's the message that he really is, is giving to us. Remember when we, when we hear about the names of Jesus, his name will be Emmanuel, God with us, and you will call him Jesus. Jesus comes from the Hebrew word to save. And that's the office that he had. The office of Savior. The office of Christ. The Messiah that was long awaited. Come to rescue us. And ensure that we would have the life in him that only he could give. The life that we, we hear about in that first article that we were just, just reading. The life that recognizes the blessings of God around us. God, I deserve nothing good from you. I deserve only your wrath because I am a sinner. But what does God give? He gives us all of these blessings, my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason, and all my senses, and still takes care of them. And then he goes on about the clothing and shoes and food and drink. God blesses us richly. And God rescues us. In Jesus Christ our Lord, forgiving our sins, opening up heaven itself, that now through faith in Jesus Christ our risen Lord, we would have life eternal. That's the greatest gift of all that God gives to us. So as we're preparing ourselves this Advent season, it's a, a penitential season. A time when we recognize the sins that we have in our lives that separate us from God. But it's also a time when we recognize what God has done and is doing. How he has come to us. How he has spoken his words of forgiveness and life. Words of assurance that we, through faith in Jesus Christ, will be with him in eternity. He's come to rescue to rescue you, to rescue me, and to rescue all through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. What greater gift could any of us want? 
What greater gift could God offer than life in his name? Life in our God. It's in Jesus' name that we, that we pray. Amen. Please write. this evening, we want to remember all of those who have been listed uh, in our prayers in those Sunday bulletins. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this nation, for our community, for our cities and communities, for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For seasonal weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, especially for Diane Birch, Waverly Bug, Louis Burks, Paul Farkas, Yvonne Harder, Linda Mann, Joanne Augsburger, Elaine Nelson, Pam Sheldon, Amy Sibbles, Lori Snyder, Michelle Spencer, and Zane Sturgeon. We pray for Liz Bassett, for John Dawson, for Tommy Earl and Lonnie Ellis, for Kevin Farkas, Faye Garza, Eleanor Gilmain, and Bill Herndon, for Heather Honeycutt, Stuart Jackson, Gary Yeager, and Dick Johnston, for Michael Leary, Janet Lowland, Todd Lowry, for Carolyn Lusenhoff, Buddy Marshall, Cindy Marshall, and Cindy Messina, for Thelma Miller, Tommy Robertson, Jack Rudisill, Robin Rudisill, and Elsie Sauer. Mark Sauer, Connie Scott, April Sethman, Lucille Stilwell, Fred Tate, Paul Tharp, Wendy Tinsley, Billy Walton, Rob Weston, Christy Wright, and Bill Zanakis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Especially for, for Jean and Joanne Augsburger this night, as Joanne's life, earthly life, seems to be coming to a close. Lord, we pray that you would be with them through this difficult time that she would continue to keep her faith in you strong, that we know that she would be with you in eternity, and that you would give Jean the comfort that he needs as he stands by her side. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The Greeno antiphons have traditionally been used in worship on the days preceding Christmas, and they reflect our hope in the coming Christ. Yes, come. Proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, mightily ordering all things. of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law on Sinai.
Almighty God, Judge and King. The whole creation waits for your coming. Come, Lord Jesus, with your grace, and fill our lives with your presence. Use all our time for your gracious purpose, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, for I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Go in peace. Sir, Lord.